you look at this type of event, you see what it, in, to some degree, it takes to be president. You have to have sort of an emotional, uh, I would say, disposition to do the job. And you see somebody like Donald Trump getting into this race, <laughs> and you try to imagine to yourself, could this man actually be presidential at a time like this after a horrific mass shooting? Uh, you've been studying Tom, Trump recently. What is this about? You know, Trump is the least presidential candidate I've ever covered. Right. I mean, he comes off and he's very silly. He's very fun. I mean, it's a whole lot of fun to cover Donald Trump because <laughs> it's always a joke. And, you know, he's always you're always laughing. You know, he'll call yeah. you right up personally, which no other candidate is going to do. Um, you know, we pulled out his speech right after his presidential announcement. Mm -hmm. They handed out the prepared remarks, and they looked nothing like what he said. I mean, the third line, he diverges <laughs> off, you know, the planned remarks. And you can see his team being like, okay, well, we'll see. This is a guy so egotistical that... I actually have reporter colleagues, and this has not happened to me, that he will literally take their pieces, X out, say you're wrong, and sign it Donald Trump and FedEx it back to them. It's a remarkable guy. Mark Murray, you have a very, I think, important stat regarding Donald Trump, is he's not filed his FEC election papers yet. So officially, in the eyes of the government, he's not a candidate. The analogy I use is he's maybe declared for the draft, but he has not signed an agent yet. Why is he being slow on doing this? Because uh, I don't know if he's actually going to get in besides the Bid News Conference and the, all the activity that he had in Iowa and New Hampshire, Luke. You know, it's interesting. He ended up announcing his presidential bid on Tuesday. I checked with the Federal Election Commission yesterday. They said they still haven't received his statement of candidacy. And you need to actually file that statement of candidacy after 15, within 15 days of either spending or receiving in campaign contributions just $5,000. And I guarantee you $5,000 was probably more uh, uh, much uh, the, the amount of money he spent on that announcement cost more than that that amount so Luke you know the the clock is ticking on this uh, and really this statement of candidacy is the most simple it's a one-page form it basically says what is your uh, campaign going to be called is it Trump for America the Donald whatever so that you can actually <laughs> file with the Federal Election Commission and then actually goes to the trickier part of does he end up filing that financial disclosure form that he has 30 days to be able to do so. Uh, and, of course, that's a very detailed uh, financial disclosure form, much more uh, substantial than just the page or two summary that he had saying that his wealth was $9 billion. Well, all the actors he hired to show up at those rallies that we've gotten from reports, they definitely probably cost $5,000. So one would think he'd do this soon. If not, it's the best free two weeks of publicity one could ever get. Now, when we try and approach him in a serious manner, which it, we, we should do to some degree. He is bombastic, as you mentioned, Jane. He had comments the other day. Uh, I want to build a fence to stop all the Mexican rapists and criminals. I mean, to some degree, when you're up on stage saying that, you're going to bring the other guys in your party into the mud. I talked to one Republican operative who said, this does not go well for us because at some point, the Jebs and Walkers and the Rubios, they'll, they'll get by. They won't get involved in this. But one of the other candidates might. And then it blows up. And then everyone has to comment on what the exchange was. Like, they don't necessarily want him on that stage. Yeah, and Donald Trump doesn't hold any punches. You know, in the middle of his announcement morning, you know, he's supposedly practicing his speech, his spokesman tells me, but he's like tweeting at Cher and calling, like, you know, <laughs> commenting on her plastic surgery. I mean, it's, he's going to pull somebody in there. I mean, there's a lot of egos on that debate oh my stage, gosh. and someone's going to get pissed, and they're going to have to talk about it. Mark Murray, Donald Trump has sort of occupied this interesting space within the GOP because as much as people sort of dismiss him, Mitt Romney was very fast to him embrace him back in 2012. At one point, Donald Trump was leading the presidential polls. Ron Fronier, our friend at the uh, National Journal, says that Trump, to some degree, he does represent that anger in America of both sides don't understand me. I'm just going to shoot from the hip and speak how I want to speak. How do these candidates walk this fine line between not offending him but not getting down on his level when he says things like, I'm going to build a fence to stop the Mexican rapists from coming over to the United States? 
You know, Luke, I actually think one of the other problems is actually just for the other Republicans staying silent. You know, I was right. really struck by the fact that uh, you end up having Donald Trump say all the things he said about Mexicans. And we didn't hear a word from Jeb Bush at all, whose wife actually is Mexican. And, of course, maybe Jeb Bush decides that he's going to say something, we'll end up responding at a later time. Maybe that's not the best menu, venue. But one of the problems that you have is that when there is somebody who's just saying all of this kind of stuff, Stuff, and no one actually tries to put that person in your place, you do end up owning it. And you, you mentioned the 2012 and Mitt Romney. It was so striking, Luke, after all Donald Trump's birther talk, that Mitt Romney gladly mm -hmm. accepted Donald Trump's endorsement, stood with him at a press conference afterward. And there was even uh, probably a situation where Donald Trump was going to have a role at the 2012 Republican convention, except that day ended up getting rained yes. out by a hurricane that was coming. But, you know, look, you play Divine with fire. You get burned, yeah. But, right. but that right, Jane. I will we'll, we'll close out here. Mark alluded to this, but you have Donald Trump making fun of Jeb Bush, how he's dressed, making fun of his intellect. You obviously have the comments about his wife's, you know, heritage. It's a very. I, I just keep coming back to this. It's that. Even if the guy does not get into the race officially, because he still hasn't filed, he sort of is always hovering in the orbit because he gets so much media attention. Like, we cannot turn away. I have a lot of people say, well, why do you cover him? He's not serious. I'm not serious because people, the average Americans see this guy, they're like, is the hair real? He's completely <laughs> insane. Like, I want to watch the car wreck. It's a very difficult thing. Yeah, I mean, we were there. He's not afraid to six. personally insult them. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're, you're sitting there with Entertainment Weekly next to your, your, the NBC mm -hmm. camera. You're just like, what what campaign am I covering? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, he's sort of like that mosquito that they're going to need to swat <laughs> away sometimes, but they can't always get rid Donald of Donald Trump, the big bloodthirsty mosquito. <laughs> Jane Tan, thank you so much. Mark Murray, appreciate your time. Take care of my friend.